So today I want to do something a little bit different. I've been doing mock drafts for years. I mean, I, you know, I've taken massive breaks and everything else, but I, I, my first mock was like in 2018 or something. And um, there's a lot of work that goes into this, and I think a lot of people don't really understand it. They they get mad, you know, during the season of the draft order change. Like, well, why, you know, why didn't you have the correct draft? Because I because this takes me a week. It literally takes me a week to do this. Um, so I just thought it'd be kind of fun to peel back the curtain. Some of you guys have been with me for a long time just to kind of show what my process is and how I go about doing these kinds of things. Um, I know a lot of times you guys disagree with what I'm seeing. Generally, that's going to be PFF or it's going to be the trade calculator type things. But at least now you can see it. And if you want to argue, you can argue with, with what I'm seeing. But um, yeah, that's that's what we're going to do. It'll be for fun. I'm probably going to not spend quite as much time because I'm, I'm, I mean, I don't have a week. I have today to get this done so we got to really go quick but uh, it'll just be kind of a quick overview of how I go about doing what it is I do all right so this is generally kind of the start of how it is you got obviously your draft order on the left um, I've got player position school and usually I'll put something like notes right here so that when I because it makes sense in the moment then sometimes I'll go to record and it's like why did I do that that doesn't make any sense and then, as you can see, this is a pretty old board I don't have my newest updated one so we'll probably use either a different source or we'll just use this or what it doesn't really matter um but all i'm really going to do is i'm just going to come in here and we're just going to for example do this this is automatic don't really even need to put any notes in there but there you go so this is kind of the foundation of how everything is done and then we kind of well let's just do this let's say that we're good with justin fields here because again we want to kind of fast forward this and um we'll stop there and look at number three then all right, so let me walk you through an example of how I come to the conclusion that um, the Miami Dolphins should take Penny Sewell. Um, there's a lot of disagreement. A lot of people say, well, why would you do that? So, so let's go through this. There's a couple resources that we need here. The first thing that I like to do is come over to here. This is pro football focus. Just hopefully they don't get mad at me. It is what it is. Let's just say that it's an advertisement for them. This is why you need them if you want to do mock drafts. There, now it's sold. So this, this is obviously Miami Dolphins fans are going to look at this and already get mad, first of all, because the grades are not as high as they'd like them to be. Um, but this is where I get myself in a lot of trouble as I look at this and say this offensive line is terrible, it needs to be fixed up. The problem is I'll get caught a lot of times because these guys are not actually the starters. This is either who was there because of an injury or whatever. So what I've started doing is coming over to here and looking at this a little bit more. This is their full roster, including guys that were hurt. And here are our tackles. And here is the biggest objection. Look at this, right here. 2020 first round pick Austin Jackson, 2020 second round pick Robert Hunt. First of all, and again, Dolphins fans probably don't want to agree with this. According to PFF, they were horrible, terrible, awful. And so you'll get the argument, yeah, well, that's, you know, they just need time to grow. Grow into what, though? Into Penny Sewell? I doubt it. Here's the other thing. Here's Robert Hunt in college at Louisiana. Now let's look at his snap counts. 100, 1,450 snaps at left guard, 1,385. Now, most recently, he was at right tackle, but he spent more time at left guard, you can't see my cursor, more time at left guard than at right tackle. What would be the problem with drafting Penny Sewell, making him your left tackle, taking first-round pick out of USC, Austin Jackson, sliding him over to right tackle, taking Robert Hunt, moving him to left guard where he spent most of his time in college and letting him play there. I don't see why that would be a problem. So some people look at it, well, we don't, tackle's too important. It's too important to sit around and say, well, maybe they won't suck one day. So I do this. I take Penny Sewell and I drop him right there because I'm not messing around. I don't care that you invested two picks. One of those guys spent a lot of time playing guard and there you go. Now that's not to say you can't do something else, but in my opinion, this guy, first of all, is way better than anybody else. Second of all, taking a wide receiver, and again, this is an older thing, so these these are a little bit out of order, but Jamar Chase generally is the next best, and then usually Devontae Smith is is after that. Um, I'm just, I'm not taking a wide receiver. The the value of the position is just, it's nowhere close. So you take Penny Sewell and the fact that he's a better football player in general than Jamar Chase, add in the positional value and uh, how important it is to help Tua, it's not even close. So Again, I'm, I'm not trying to necessarily do a mock draft, although I, I definitely get into it when I start talking about it. But that's kind of how I come to those kinds of conclusions. Those are a couple of the different resources that I end up using to pick for the Miami Dolphins. For the Atlanta Falcons, um, 
here's my my biggest hang up now and 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 again we've been doing quarterback here and i think i'm fine with that man this is really old we got trey lance is the next highest on this thing i'll just pull up a different resource in a second but here's the issue that i have look at this this is the second highest grade on this entire team and again some of these might be a little bit wrong but it's just it, the the complication I have, and I get you know I'm ready to move on, and we got to do something different. The the complication I have, we need help, we need help, we need help, we need help, 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 help. We could get better in all these different areas. The defense basically is this guy and not a lot else. And I know I, again, Falcons fan. Oh yes, this guy's great, and these guys are great, and this guy's great, and all these guys are elite, and they're the best in football. I get it. Great. This is one of the only really good players you have on your team with the exception of a couple offensive linemen and wide receivers and a defensive tackle. And even if you want to change that a little, well, technically, it doesn't matter. So that's my biggest hang-up, as I'm worried that Matt Ryan is being undervalued and that he's not the problem and that he needs a better offensive line, better running back, tight end, and a, a better defense would be nice. And we have an opportunity to help that, to help fix that up a little bit. Um, and maybe we should. But again, I, I, I guess I get it, and I'm playing along with it to say, you know, okay, let's go ahead and get the next quarterback. i got to see if I can scroll down and even find the guy in here. He's, he wasn't even in. Sheesh. Well, whatever. We'll fill it in later. Um, that's, that's my only hang-up is are we blaming Matt Ryan or are we just acknowledging that it's time to tear it down and move on? Because obviously we can't do it contractually this year anyways. But this is where I come in here and it's like, are you guys sure? I mean – Tell me if you're sure. If you're like, yeah, I know he's not the problem, but it's still time to move on, then cool, let's do it. If you're saying, no, I think Matt Ryan is garbage and he's the problem, I'm probably going to go ahead and disagree with you and maybe not pick quarterback anymore. But I don't know. Again, this is my hang-up, but I've still been drafting quarterback because, again, I, I understand that you are ready to move on. But even if we click on it, um, I mean, dude has been solid for a while, and he's 35, which is kind of getting up there, but who's to say he can't play another five years or four years or whatever? I don't know. Just just, just a thought, but we'll throw quarterback in there because that seems to be the consensus so far. Now, this pick, I think, is important because this is where you get a value issue. Now, again, this is not the right board, but it's, it's still fine because this is roughly about where the next best tackle sits. So a lot of times I'm sitting here and I'm saying I kind of want to trade out because I want to move back to this range, maybe a little bit up here because I want to reach. I don't want to miss out on the tackle. So if I can move from here to about here and then reach a little bit, then I'm a little bit more comfortable and I get a little bit more value rather than reaching. And a lot of times people will get mad at me for, you know, either if and, and then if I can't trade, you know, I'll get Jamar Chase or something like that. And people say, no, you should just reach all the way down here. And sometimes it's even worse. There won't be a tackle. Let's say he's not even there. You should have got this guy. I'm not doing that. I'm just I'm absolutely not. And I think not having that visual aid to say, you know, this is the reason why um, I'm not going that route because it's this much of a reach is hurting me because people are like, why don't you just get a tackle? Because I can't, dude. There's nobody here. Um, so, again, just general thought process. I'm sitting here and I'm looking at it, and this is when I do trades. I'm not looking at, okay, the Cowboys want to come up or, man, the Bears really want to get a quarterback and they want to come up. I don't care because if I'm sitting here and I want to make a pick, I'm going to make a pick. And I, I for that first year I was doing mock drafts, I spent way too much time – trying to remember, okay, who wants to move? This guy wants to move up, and, and maybe he kind of wants to move up if this, and then these guys, and then th it doesn't matter. He either wants to pick or he doesn't. If he doesn't want to pick, he'll start looking for a trade partner. If he does, then, you know, he just picks. So the question really is, do I want to go like Jamar Chase, and you got the LSU connection with the quarterback there, and it's kind of a cool thing, or do I, am I just super desperate for offensive line? And the mode I'm in is super desperation for offensive line. And so um, usually I'm going to trade back in this spot. So I, I want to, I don't have it queued up because I'm stupid. But uh, let me, give me one second. I'll pull something up. So I have two resources that I use now. I used to just use the trade value charts, but people would get so mad at me because they said I was undervaluing the trades, right? Basically, if you move anywhere in the first round, especially in the top 10, it should be like 16 first round picks. People massively overvalue first round picks. Let's look at, for example, the Panthers wanna move up here. I would bet if I took a poll what that would cost, it would be a first round pick. And then usually I highlight this so that I know that the trade took place here. I don't usually use Google Sheets for this. Where is the dumb thing? Here we go. 
whatever. It doesn't matter. I guess I don't need to be doing this right now. But there you got that. And they traded with the Bengals. Just so I know when I go back and do this that, that I need to announce that there was a trade here. And I keep it the same color and I change which color is which if I do one down here. Okay, so the, the trade took place, right? The first thing is a trade value chart. It's very simple math. We moved from 8, which is 406, up to 5, which is 468. Basic math, it's about 60, right? Look at this. It's basically exactly right. We have to give a third round pick. It's a third round pick. It's not two firsts. It's not a first and a second. It's not a first and a sixth. It's a third round pick. Now, maybe that's not true. Maybe that's not realistic. Maybe this trade chart is nonsense. So then I come over to here. This is every single trade in the last like 20 years from 1994 to 2020 that has involved the fifth overall pick. Take a look at this. 2012 Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Jacksonville Jaguars. They moved from 7 to 5. So that's a slightly less jump. They traded a fourth round pick. So you think from an 8 to a to a 5, a third round pick is reasonable? I tend to think that it is, right? And then you got a bunch of other stuff. They moved from 17 to 5 and gave up a second and three players. I can't do a conversion on that. I don't know how to do that. Um, this here is a super weird trade involving a first and a next year's second, which is dumb. This is the one that makes the most sense, though. Right here, Tampa Bay and Jacksonville in 2012. And so that tells me if moving from 7 to 5 is a fourth, and this is telling me a third, everything's saying, yeah, I think a third-round pick makes sense. So then you can come over here, which I wasn't planning on doing, We'll look at the Carolina Panthers and just make sure that they have, where's Carolina? Let's see, third pick right here. So this is the pick we're giving up. Pick 73 in the third round. So I'll come over here, and then usually I'll have like a trade thing here. And um, usually it'll be like a note. I'll type in here why I decided to make the trade for the Bengals and the Panthers. But it will just be ultimately that. And then I'll announce it in the in the video, and every comment will be, that's stupid, you're an idiot, there's no way they'll trade up for a third-round pick, because people don't actually look into it, they just think everything involves a first-round pick, and they scream at me. I'm just going based on information. That's, that's all I can do. So, again, I'm just telling you what I see and why I'm doing it. And, again, so I, I like this trade because it's I get an additional third, and I'm in range of Leatherwood. Almost zero chance he's gone right here especially when you consider the teams that are here. So we're going to pick up the additional third. We're going to move back. We're going to take Leatherwood. Again, that's not actually who we're taking, but in this example, it would be. I should just use these players because it doesn't matter. And then the Panthers are going to come up, and they're going to take Mr. Trey Lance, quarterback. And I copy this because it gets kind of stupid over here and messes up my uh, colors if I don't do that. So there you go. That is how I do trades. And again, now you can see why this takes me about a week to do all this stuff, not including all the editing, because it's just... And it ends up being a lot more in-depth, and a lot of times I'll go look at different things, see if there's any new news, any new resources, any new rumors, and I'll try to incorporate that in all the different picks. But um, that's more or less, there's one other resource that I want to look at, but that's, that's a lot of what I do is using those kinds of resources. So one other thing, I just started auto-filling a couple of these things that I want to point out. Um, a lot of times what will happen, you'll be sitting here looking at the Cowboys, and, and a lot of times Cowboys fans have something in their mind, and let's just pretend Sean Wade isn't here right now. Um, and so we're looking at it, and they're saying, we really want a corner, right? So they're looking at it, and again, let's just pretend this is the real value. I understand that this is not what it is, and this guy should be way up here, and he should be way down here. We're, we're, we're playing make-believe. What Cowboys fans will praise me for and give me all kinds of thumbs up for is if I just do this. And this is the easy thing for me to do. Let's just do that. Who cares? Because the Cowboys fans don't care. They want what they want, right? But I'm too stubborn. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to look at it and say, look at the value here. This is a top five player. Again, it's fake. It's make-believe. Relax. Stick with me here. This is a top five player. And, of course, it's, it's an edge rusher, so it's a premium position. So that makes it even more valuable. He's a top five premium position player. And, of course, he's going to help. We have a good pass rusher. Now we have two. I'm going to end up doing this. So a lot of the picks that I do, and I'm doing less of it, because why am I hurting myself by doing the right thing when you guys are just going to hate my videos? But I'm trying to stick to being more realistic. And maybe if I did more live things, you know, actual live instead of this um, little explainer video, uh, then I would get less hate, maybe, I don't know. But that's that's one of the other scenarios that I'm in. A lot of times is these guys will fall, and I'm looking at these guys, and it's like, man, I really need to do the responsible thing and pull him in. But without having that visual aid for people watching, a lot of times they just don't care. So th that's going to be the pick for now, just as an example. 
And then the finer, final major resource that I like to use is looking at contracts because not only are you looking at players and you got to try to sift through the injury history and sometimes they're really good but they had you know they're it was a flukish year or sometimes they had maybe just had a bad year but they're good players there's so many things you're trying to balance but one of the other things that you're going to get dinged on if you're doing this kind of stuff is not looking at player contracts right if you're if you're not looking at the fact that yeah you have really good players at a position but they're all going to be gone fans are smarter than you they know their team and if, if you don't know their team too they're gonna eat you alive so um another important resource if you're gonna do this kind of stuff is to let me pull this up here come on there we go so this is um looking at contracts this is over the cap um it's another resource i would encourage you to pay for if you want to do this kind of stuff but you can see how many people all the blue are current undrafted free agents guys in 2021 that do not have contracts there's a lot of them here and so the things that are blue uh tampa is another really good example one of their biggest strengths is defensive line but there's a lot of blue in here same for the 49ers but the biggest thing to look at as i've said before look at the corners look at this you have one two three and i know some of these guys are like you know practice squad guys but Let's just count it out anyways. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Right? So if we don't if we don't count these green guys, we got seven and all seven of them. Every single one of them is blue. He's a restricted free agent, but still 2021 free agent. Every single one of them. And so again, some of these guys will get re-signed and you can click here. You can see he's 30 years old. That's not a good sign. If he's 24 or 26 or whatever, that's great. He's 30. That really sucks. Emmanuel Mosley, he's young, so he'll probably stick around. Again, restricted free agent. He's not going anywhere. Richard Sherman, 33. So another guy, 30. That's not good. So we got Witherspoon is 26, and then Jamar Taylor is 31. So we have two guys. Witherspoon is 26. Mosley is 25. And then you can go back to our other resources and say, okay, how good are these guys? How good is Emmanuel Mosley? Uh, let's do that quickly. Don't have, I don't know how quickly I can do that here um san francisco we have another resource i can use but let's just use this because it's up right now we'll go over to the roster come down to cornerback and we've got witherspoon solid right did he play a lot kind of there's his total snap count um who is the other one that we were talking about let me pull that up for myself real quick emmanuel mosley where's emmanuel mosley he's down here they're calling him a safety so that's another thing that's like well is he a safety or is he a corner? Because you're going to get dinged on that too. You got to figure that out. So I can go into a snap counts and look. Either way, not great. So um, again, this is a pretty good resource that you need to look at. And and that's why if you're doing a mock draft and you're saying, well, I really would like to get them this player and all the fans are saying, we need corner, we need corner. It's because they're all knowing about this stuff here. And you also probably should know about that. But again, you can look at these kinds of things. Defensive line is going to be important. Um, offensive line, look at this. You know, Mike McGlinty obviously going to be sticking around for a while, but you got a lot of guys here, 32 years old, 33 years old, 33 years old, all free agents. Offensive line also going to be important. Doesn't really matter for what we're doing right now, but again, it's another thing. And again, if you want to do this correctly, if you really want to do this right, you got to put in all this work. And that's why I just, I get annoyed with, you know people that just throw on a simulator and they just start grabbing stuff like you know i don't know do the work man so the final 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 resource that i really love to use is my own comment section and this is why i tell you go in the comments type in your team name so in this example i typed in vikings right here and then give me your feedback right so if i i, I can scroll through here and see a lot of different stuff for example, the one bar and Lupagus fellas over there said, with Wyatt Davis injury, still a bit of a question mark. Got to go with defensive end Gregory Russo. So just give me little insights, right? Uh, little things of what Vikings fans are thinking about. Um, you know, and I'll just scroll through here and see. Or if I want to do uh, 49ers, if I can type here, 49ers. And it just pulls up a library of all of your comments. And again, this is why I tell you, please type in the name of your team so that I can come in here and look at all the different comments and whatnot to see, you know, if I'm, if I'm just really stuck and it's like, what do I think about this? And I'll, I'll just kind of scroll through and see what people are saying about it. So um, anyways, and again, with the comp picks, I'm not doing comp picks because it's just, it's not really official and it just, it doesn't matter right now. I'll get it to when I, I'll get to it when I get to it. But um, that's about it, man. That's, that's, that's kind of the long and short of 
how I go through the mock draft process. Again, there's nothing wrong with just throwing on a simulator and having fun with it, but um, if you really want to go after it, I, th I think there's some resources that are kind of important. I personally am not really willing to do this without PFF because I need to know how good these players are. You know, and, and I know they're not a perfect resource, but otherwise I'm just I'm just making things up because I'm not watching all these teams, all these players, every single snap, every single day. I'm just not. Um, understanding the contracts, granted, you don't need to pay for that resource in order to see it, but again, as long as much time as this takes, I need a snapshot, right? And so I get a snapshot with that to be able to see. Um, that's with over the cap. Um, I've got um, stat head is how I pulled up the um, the trade resource. If you want to take a look at that, um, again, I just I, I just I love doing this and I want to take it seriously um, and I want to really try to get the best answers. And I know I frustrate you guys a lot of times with my picks, but I just want you to at least see what the process is. And yeah, you know, it's, it's incredibly frustrating when I do something and it's like, dude you know this guy was injured how did you miss like ah, i put in so much work into that pick and i missed a stupid little detail it happens but um again that's just i just wanted to show you the uh the process by which i give you these mock drafts and i'm excited to keep some more coming um mock draft 14 just dropped so make sure you check that out otherwise 15 will be right around the corner and uh, we got some other fun stuff coming so thanks for hanging out